said earlier how much I love that song that we sang going into the, the message. It's a song called Reckless, and, and I know probably a lot of people are not even aware of this, but there's a little bit of controversy in, in some Christian circles about that song because it describes God's love as reckless. And there's some people that don't care for that. They don't like the picture of God being reckless. They like God being in control, and, and reckless sounds like he's not in control. And I read an article a couple of weeks ago about that where, where a guy was writing, and he says, you know what, I love the song except for they added that word reckless in the song. And literally, this guy is well-respected. He's a blogger, and he says, I love singing a song at my church, but he says, every time it gets the word reckless, I just don't sing that word. I don't know how that sounds as you're singing, but that's, that's, that's what he does. And he wrote this whole blog about it, and there was this discussion about it. And, and the thing is, as I was reading that, I was, I was getting a little bit frustrated myself. I, I love that song, and, and I understand where they're coming from, but... But I read this book a few years ago. Uh, some of y'all read this. We went through this a couple of years ago with some, some leadership people at, at the church and stuff. And, and it's, it's called Prodigal God by Tim Keller. He's a, a pastor up in, in New York. Really, really sharp, sharp guy. And someone shared this quote in the middle of this discussion. Uh, Tim Keller's a, a really respected, especially in those circles, really respected pastor, theologian. And he says this. The father's welcome to the repentant son was literally Reckless. Because he refused to reckon or count his sin against him or demand repayment. And he says this. And, and by the way, this is a story of the prodigal son. It's, it's a story about the father's reckless love for his son, which is a picture of God's love for us. It says, Jesus is showing us the God of great expenditure, who is nothing if not prodigal towards us, his children. And then it says this. God's reckless grace is our greatest hope. I want us to get that picture right there. God's reckless grace is our greatest hope. That when God leaves the 99 to come after us, it looks to the outsider as being reckless because I got to take care of those 99 as well. I got to make sure that they're safe. But God's reckless grace says, I'm going to leave the 90, 99 because if I don't go chase the one that's lost, their greatest hope is gone. And so we sing that song about God abandoning the 99 to go and to pursue the one because we matter. I want to let you know wherever you're at right now in your journey with Jesus. I believe for some of us, we made that thing sure we know that we're following Jesus. For others, we've been fighting him for the longest time. We're kind of dipping our toe in the water saying, I'm checking this thing out, but I'm not sure about any of this. Just as Paul was pursued by God with a reckless love, God's pursuing you and I just as much right now. Because Paul, God looked at Paul, who everyone else wanted to give up on. And Paul said, no, even though the church was frustrated, even though the church was scared, God said, I know that you're scared of what is going to happen, but I'm telling you, if I could take his life and change his life for my glory, it's going to impact the entire world. 